Hello, 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 it's Lorene and you're welcome to Lorene's Bits and Pieces. I am so happy to have you with me today. It's a little bit wet and wild and woolly here in Adelaide today. It is winter and so I was thinking what can I make today? And today I am going to be diving into a recipe that I designed for myself back when I was in my mid-teens I'm guessing and it was based on some fish that I had found in my mum's deep freeze and I thought what can I do with this so what we're going to be doing is my fish pie so uh, without further ado uh, let's get going first of all you'll need to have your oven at about 190 degrees Celsius and we will be turning it to conventional oven. Alrighty, so what we have here is pretty much everything we're going to need for our pie today. We've got some medium potatoes here, we've got some fish, in this case we're using some salmon with the skin off, but you can use any fish that you like. You could use tuna, you could use a white fish, you could use whiting, you could use whatever fish you want. Um, I personally love um, salmon um, and I also love rainbow trout and stuff like that so all of those yummy yummy foods we've got some spices and things here we've got some cheese some milk butter and for the very first time we're going to be making a white sauce using gluten-free flour I've never used gluten-free flour before so I'm looking forward to giving this one a go over here we have a teaspoon of curry powder, a teaspoon of paprika, about three quarters of a teaspoon of black pepper, and about half a teaspoon of salt. So this, 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 and this will all be going together to make a white sauce. And meanwhile these lovely potatoes will be boiling up and getting ready to mash. And then the fish will go in with the white sauce, okay? So that's a very brief rundown of how we'll be doing this today. So let's get into it. All right. So first of all, we need to peel and cut our potatoes up so that they are able to be boiled and mashed. Okay, with your fish, whatever fish you do choose, you just want to make double sure that all the bones are out because there's nothing worse than eating a fish anything and finding that there are still bones in it. Now these fillets are generally pretty good for being bone free so I'm not too worried about that and all we're doing is we're just going to chop them up into chunks just like this Now we just set that aside and wait for the next stage. Alrighty, let's get on to this white sauce. We've got about 50 grams of butter here. And I'm just going to use the same sort of measurements that I would use if I was re using regular flour. So about, about that much. See how we go, see if it reacts the same way. Okay, it's a little bit runnier than what I would be expecting, so I'm just going to pop a little bit more in there. the same way that regular wheat flour does. So we'll press on and we'll add our milk slowly and see how that goes. See if adding the milk makes that. Ah, uh, there we go. Beautiful. Now we're getting a bit of what I'm used to seeing. How fat 
can I use that? I'm using about a cup of milk. We'll see how that goes with the amount of uh, gluten-free flour that I put in there and see where we get up to with that. I don't mind putting a bit more milk in if required because I want to source not a thick gloopy mess. So you see how it's gone a little bit lumpy so you, when it gets like that you just mix it around this is, I'm applying flower principles here. <laughs> Regular flower principles. Oops. In the pot the ring. Okay. These potatoes are boiling nicely. It's coming together quite nicely. You can of course go for the dairy free option of the sauce as well. I've been doing a little bit of research around that and you can use, instead of using the butter, you can actually use oil. So you can use one of your vegetable oils if you wish. And then instead of milk, cow's milk, you can use things like um, almond milk or any of your other milks of choice. I think rice milk would probably be quite nice in here. It's looking pretty good actually. And now we've got all of these spices, the uh, curry powder, the paprika, pepper and the salt. There we go and all of those can go in there now. I'm going to drop this temperature down one more click so it's on a medium low temperature now. It's about now that you just want to double check your seasonings and just make sure that you're happy with how everything's coming together. Mm. Perfect. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll pop that fish in there. and let that simmer for about five minutes, three to five minutes. Okay. Meanwhile, I think these potatoes are done. Almost, yep, there they go. You can tell because when I've squished them against the side there, they've just broken apart quite nicely. So they're all ready to be mashed up now. So now we're going to be giving these kind of like a dry mash, um, which basically means no extra fluid is added. We will be putting a little bit of butter in there, just because I love butter in my mashed potato. And that's partly why I wanted to wait until the potatoes were pretty much falling apart when I was cooking them, because I knew that we wouldn't be putting any extra fluid in here at this stage and as you can see it's a pretty quick and easy mash and the reason why I want it a bit, little bit drier is because when you pop it in the oven it gets beautiful little crispies on the top and it just looks amazing That's all done and ready. Fantastic. Look at that. Looks great. Love me some potato. 
Next we bring in our casserole dish. Okay, the fish has been cooking for that three to five minutes. Basically as long as it takes you to mash up your potatoes is about how long it needs to be sitting in that. Just put that in there. This would be enough to feed about four people with some sides if you wished. You see how it's quite light and fluffy? That's what you want, okay? And you just sort of sprinkle that over the top. So it's just loosely covering your fish filling. And you can literally pop this in the oven just like this if you like. Or you can add a bit of grated cheese to the top as a little bit of extra yummy if you wish. If you don't want to have the grated cheese on the top, then you don't have to pop it in there. It still will taste absolutely yummy. I will be using the grated cheese. We've got a little bit of a block left here. Just going to use the ultra fine um, side of my grater and just go directly over the top of that. Handy little hint if you want your cheese and things to seem like they're going a lot further, use the really fine side of your grater and you'll be surprised at how much it seems to go just that little bit further than if you use the chunky side. It makes people think you're really super fancy too. <laughs> And that just gives that little bit of extra creamy saltiness on the top. There we go. So we'll pop that in the oven now for about, oh, I'm going to say 20 minutes or until the potato is browned. But in the instructions at the bottom, I'll tell you exactly how long that took for our oven. Okay, and here we go. Extra yumminess for us today. Fresh out of the oven. And on fan assist, that took 15 minutes. So 15 minutes got it to this nice, lovely, golden brown stage. And it smells and looks absolutely delicious. So let's get a little bit of this out. Bearing in mind, of course, it's going to be jolly hot. Oh, look at that. Doesn't that look amazing? Mm -mm -mm. a little taste test. Alrighty my friends, have a look at that. Ooh, yum. So let's make sure we get a little bit of potato, a little bit of fish. Oh great. Ready? Mm-hmm. Oh, this is amazing. I love the uh, spiciness that is coming through. It's got a really well-rounded, warm kind of flavor to it. That pepper, now funnily enough, I'm not actually a huge fan of pepper, like black pepper. 
but in this with the curry powder and the salt and the paprika you'd think it would be quite heat forward but it's really not it's actually the amount that we've created and put together for this yes there's a little bit of spice there but it's nothing that most people wouldn't be able to handle I think um, for somebody who likes pepper steak or anything like that they'll love this this amount of heat um, that cheese that's in the just just that tiny touch of cheese you've got that coming through too um, the fish obviously being salmon has got quite a richness to it anyway and that's definitely there I really to be honest let me just get a little bit of that sauce on its own I'm not tasting any difference between that and a wheat sauce so I can quite honestly say I'm happy to keep using the gluten-free flour for the white sauces and things like that it is a little bit more on the pricey side and for someone who doesn't necessarily have to have gluten-free I'm happy to mix it up between the two but yeah wow that is um that's so delicious and I have to show you something funny this, my friends, is my recipe. <laughs> I wrote it on the back of an envelope. Uh, it was, I think, maybe even a bank envelope. <laughs> back on the 8th of July, I don't know what year because it's ripped off, but isn't that just so funny? There we go. So that's the recipe that I've been working from today. I hope that you enjoy it. I hope you give it a go in whatever fish flavors uh, you love to have. If you just have tinned tuna, you could totally do it with tinned tuna. You could mix it up. You could put some vegetables in there, mixed veggies and things like that, or put the mixed veggies on the side. That's also equally delicious and yummy. So thank you so much for watching. I'm so, so grateful for you coming along this journey with me and me learning how to use gluten-free flour. And if you'd like to subscribe, that would help me out a lot. And I would love it if you watched another video up here or there's a subscribe button over here. Thank you very much for coming along on this journey with me. Be bold, be brave, be you, my beautiful friends. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.